Welcome to Below Average Gaming. I'm your host, the Below Average Gamer, and today um, I do have to say that I recently watched the Batman vs Superman movie again. But the first time that I watched, it, I did make a video about some things that were done successfully as well as unsuccessfully. And between the time of putting that video out and then um, rewatching the movie, um, a lot of things have changed. I've come up with a lot of different uh, opinions. Yes, there are still the characters I like and don't like. And this isn't a video saying like, oh, I want to change my mind about that that I said earlier and change my mind about this that I said. Again, um, but I did go into it with an open mind the second time. The first time I went, I went with a lot of friends who were really into comic books and making sure that everything's canon and everyone's following the rules. And uh, every time a rule was broken, we kind of jotted that down saying, that's something for me to be angry about later. And yeah, there still are some things about the movie that I'm upset about. But the second time I went, I went with a more open mind and I went uh, kind of just wanting to see a movie and pushing out the ideas of all the background stuff that I knew. And instead went into a blank slate. Num, using only the information that I'd gotten from the Man of Steel movie. And I have to say that it was pretty enjoyable. Um, it was a decent movie. I am going to probably be picking it up on DVD when it comes out. Um, I want to make sure that I get Civil War and Apocalypse first, so it's not very high on my priority list to get Batman vs. Superman, but I am going to be trying to get that. Um, but this video is about something very different than that, and it is about, it is talking about a lot uh, the comparison of Superman to Jesus Christ. A lot like they did with the first movie, where a lot of people kind of saw that comparison. Um, this isn't a thing of me saying, like, I'm going to push religion on you or Christianity on you or anything. It is just me saying that there are some really big comparisons that need to be drawn. So, Easter was just this past weekend, and might I say that I am stocked on post-Easter candy sales well into September. But the more I thought about Easter, the more that I started thinking about um, Batman vs. Superman. Clark became Superman at the age of 33, which is about the age that Jesus began his ministry. Both were cast to Earth by their fathers with the goal and purposes of saving the planet, knowing that they would go through a lot of pain and be seen as outcasts. And that was one of the really big things that was very different about uh, Man of Steel in regards to other superhero movies, or other Superman movies, rather, is uh, that he was looked at as an alien and as an outcast rather than some savior. And that's what became the big issue in the second movie. Uh, Jesus was a carpenter who worked with his hands, and Clark had several menial jobs in relation to Christ. But uh, this was all we had to compare the story of Superman to Jesus Christ. And if that was all we had to compare, then there's nothing saying that Goku and the story of Lilo and Stitch aren't the exact same thing. But I think that Batman vs. Superman truly solidified this arc as a biblical allegory. Uh, let's take a look at Senator Finch. First off, we have Senator Finn First off, we have Senator Finch, who is portrayed as the ultimate form of justice, peace, um, tranquility, all these good things. She's portrayed as, and she's seen wearing primarily white, which is, um, I think, a lot of the character going to show who she is, is that she believes in peace and prosperity. And uh, so she wears that white outfit a lot up until the courtroom scene where she's wearing a, a lot of uh, black and white with red all over. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the movie, that's a really funny joke uh, for the courtroom scene. But Senator Finch quickly becomes the center of all things good and peaceful in the world, much like in the story of Adam and Eve in the Christian Bible. Uh, for those of you who don't know about Adam and Eve, they lived in paradise and were basically the embodiments of perfection created by God up until the devil tricked the two into eating forbidden fruit. Now, the idea was, if you eat the fruit, you will fully understand the world, and you will fully understand sin and the ideas of good and evil. And uh, when they ate the fruit, you know, that's what happened, and they were kind of kicked out of paradise. Now, in Batman vs. Superman, not much strays from that same story. Lex tries to feed his own personal brand of psychotic BS to the public that Superman is evil. In order to do that most effectively, he must get the emblem of justice and peace, Senator Finch, to eat the apple, or in their case, drink the tea. So, yeah, in the story of Adam and Eve, it's this whole idea of eat this apple and you will understand the entire world as it truly is, and you will grow to hate God. Whereas in Batman vs. Superman, it's the same idea. Lex Luthor trying to get Senator Finch to drink the tea, as he puts it, um, to, in other words, to accept his lies so that the world may accept those lies and come to hate Superman and see the world as he sees it. But once she does realize that she has fallen for Lex Luthor's trick and eaten the forbidden fruit, it's really too late. And the world sees Superman for what he 
really is, or should I say, um, what Lex Luthor wants them to believe he really is. Now, we've already compared Lex to the devil when he tricked Finch into eating the fruit and opening the world's eyes, but there's actually a lot more evidence than that. The story of the devil, aka Lucifer, is that he was once an angel held on a high pedestal, but upon thinking he was better than God himself, was cast down to hell for eternity. Now, that one may not need much explanation, but that's basically the entire plot of Batman vs. Superman. Lex feels that the appearance of this Superman is an attempt at his power. Before Superman got there, he was the biggest, coolest, most powerful person in the world. He was cool, he was rich, he was famous, he had all this great stuff, and once Superman gets there, you know, things don't work. Even in his acceptance speech, um, not acceptance speech, but his speech for the, um, the donation of the library where Batman and Superman actually meet each other as Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, he kind of begins to break down, and he mentions the phrase, um, knowledge is pa books are knowledge, and knowledge is power. And you cannot have knowledge without power because that is paradoxical. And he starts to really break down this whole idea that he has so much knowledge, but based on this comparison to Superman now, he has no power. He's been knocked off of that pedestal. Lex feels that the appearance of the Superman is an attempt at his power, and therefore he wages a personal war on the Kryptonian, much how Jesus and the devil are seen as polar opposites. In the biblical story, Jesus is portrayed by the ones who once he's betrayed by the ones who once followed his teachings. Um, people are yelling and screaming, all this stuff. If you've seen Passion of the Christ, um, there's this big scene in it where uh, the people all suddenly just decide to turn against him. And in the movie Batman vs. Superman, I think it's a really big scene where he's going into court to kind of plead his case. And we see all these people who were once for him suddenly yelling and screaming against him right next to the statue that they had for when he saved the city by destroying it. All the while, both Lucifer and Lex eagerly await the death of the hero. Um, going as far as to tip their hand. Lucifer uses Judas as the ultimate tool of betrayal in the story of Jesus Christ. Um, someone who is close to Jesus, someone who was his friend, someone who is of the same blood, um, so to speak, to, to, uh, to bring Jesus down. It's his one tool. Um, now Judas was once one of Jesus' closest friends, going as far as to call him a brother. Now Lex uses Doomsday to exact his own justice. One of Superman's own, a Kryptonian and partially the clone of General Zod, who was once fighting alongside Superman's father. So now we have this whole idea of the devil using Judas to turn the people against Superman, or sorry, against, turn the people against Jesus Christ, where we have Lex using Doomsday as his weapon to bring down Superman once the people are turned against him. It's really interesting. The more that I thought about it, the more that things kind of started to link up. But uh, for all those reasons, and many more, I think the whole arc of Superman is an allegory for the Christian Bible and the story of Jesus. It's, it's crazy. You can even look at it from different angles. Like I said, I just came at it as, oh yeah, I remember a long time ago when the movie first came out, people were saying he was kind of like Jesus, and this whole thing kind of matches up to that. The whole idea of drink the tea or eat the apple kind of matches alongside that of turning people against their god. Lex Luthor refers to uh, Superman as a god throughout the entirety of the movie and even makes uh, metaphors comparing to a picture of a devil and an angel fighting for the realm of, of manhood. This picture and wanting to turn it upside down because he feels that Superman is actually the devil. But the thing is, if you turn it upside down, that turns Lex's position into the angel. So he sees himself... Not as the villain, but as the hero. But as the movie progresses and he starts to kind of lose connection, lose touch with humanity, go a little bit nuts, he his, his, his argument becomes invalid. One final thing before the farewell to further my point. This year Easter was celebrated on, on uh, March 27th and uh, celebrates the resurrection of Jesus after being dead for three days. Which is really interesting considering that Batman vs. Superman had an early release which pushed it, at least here in California, to coming out on March 24th. Um, now, spoiler alert, I put that at the beginning, but I'll say it again now. Uh, Superman dies at the end. Therefore, Superman dies on March 24th, three days before we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the Christian Bible. So, I think that that is either one huge coincidence, or just another way for them to further the point. Because the, the release date for the movie was March 25th, but they did decide to push it one day earlier. So, yeah, that's another huge one. I don't know if uh, directors have said anything about it or, or what, but I know that uh, if I were them, I'd be really 
wary to mention anything religious in regard to a superhero movie because uh, DC is already on some some rough ground for for other movies. This one I think you might want to be really careful with. So yeah, that's it. That's why I think that Superman and uh, and Jesus are allegories for one another and have a lot of comparison. Thanks for tuning in to Below Average Gaming. I'm your host, the Below Average Gamer. Please do not forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to hear more about my thoughts on Batman vs. Superman, um, what they did right, what they did wrong, the link will be in the description. And remember, may Superman bless you and keep you. Thanks.